everybody welcome back to crochet through corona i hope you're staying safe and staying sane um hopefully a bit of crochet therapy will help with the latter um i don't know about you but my ear has been talked off by a toddler this last couple of days and i'm my patience is running thin um quite circular conversations with a toddler um but hopefully some time out now will just allow my brain to reset and go back and have some nice chats again so today we have a project and we are going to be turning a tin can, one that we're probably all using lots of at the minute, into these lovely little pots. Um, they can become pencil holders or ruler holders, <laughs> that was not imaginative, hook holders. I use mine to hold my scraps of yarn in one of these. Um, they can be gifts for people. The possibilities are sort of endless, so I would love to hear what ideas you come up with of what you're going to use yours for when you're finished, so please do get in touch with those. This is, They can just become nicely decorated. Today I'm going to show you how to make a block colour and then also how to change the colour and then I will leave it over to you to decide what you're going to do with yours. So I'm just trying to slot this back in here to start my tutorial. There we go. So today we'll need the usual things, some yarn, your scissors, your darning needle and your crochet hook. So if you're using the same yarn as me, then you will need your 4.5mm crochet hook. That's that one there. Um, if you're not using the same yarn as me, that's absolutely fine, but you will likely need to adjust the pattern and it's this beginning bit where you will need to adjust the pattern and then the end bit. So. Um, you might have to get your maths get brain on here, so it's just help, helping that mental work out as well for you today. I'm just going to try and adjust that light so you can see a little bit clearer. Let's see, how's that? A bit better? Yeah. Okay, so we need to cast on. I'm going to skip some of the steps in this one to make the video not too long. I think I've shown you how to cast on a number of times. And we are going to chain... 36 if you're using the same weight yarn as me so that's 36 and then we're going to chain an extra two because they are going to be from the first stitch of um, when we go back along so actually you're chaining on 38 and that's because when you double crochet you crochet into the fourth chain from hook and that will form your first stitch so we, if you have some different yarn to me, what you'll need to do is chain until your yarn fits nicely around the outside of the tin and then chain two. So you want to have it meeting and then chain an extra two. So fitting around the outside of the tin and then add the extra two on for the first double crochet stitch. Now I would suggest that you try and get a number that is a multiple of four. And that is because when we come to put the rim on at the top, we do some decreasing and I'm gonna be doing mine in multiples of four. Um, so you can, as I say, tweak it as, at your leisure. I'm gonna suggest that for people following this video and then it's up to you what you do after that. So I've gone for, I will have 36 stitches, but I, I chained 38 so that the first stitch um, is the extra chains at the end. Okay, hope that made some sense. If it doesn't, please comment below. And then to do our double crochet, I will definitely recap that because we've only done that a few times. So we yarn over before we start. And then we start in the fourth chain from hook. So the first chain is the one that the yarn on your hook is coming out of. So one two, three, four, and that's where we're gonna start. And then we will yarn over and pull through. We've got three loops in our hook. Yarn over and pull through the first two, and yarn over and pull through the second two. And then we just carry that on all the way along. Trying to keep a reasonable tension because you don't want your um, covering going really saggy in the middle. So we're just yarning over and going on all the way to the end. I am 
actually really keen to to hear what um, you make with these and how you're going to use them. I feel like there should be so many uses for them, but I'm at the minute a bit blank. I should mention that um, if you're doing anything with children, then you might want to use tin cans that have um, had the edge cut, cut off. So I actually use a can opener, um, an electric can opener for mine that cuts it below that kind of sticky out sharp bit that is in a lot of tins. Um, so that's all removed. And then you can just use a bit of wire wool to check that there's no um, extra little sp uh, spikes coming off of your um, tin and then it's a bit more child safe and then adding the lip around the top that we will add also adds that extra bit of protection for that so they should be fairly versatile once this is once you've finished maybe this is a bit that I should have done a blue pizza as I made earlier kind of situation but I didn't so you're gonna have to just listen to me having a little chatter so the only bit of adult conversation I get in a day yeah what has my life come to hey I don't know about you but um, I'm still enjoying finding the silver linings in this situation I know that there are many drawbacks for many people and for lots of people it is really tricky what is going on especially if work has been majorly affected and your income um, and missing family obviously is a massive one but do try and keep your eye out for those um, blessings and joys that have come from this time I know spending more time with my family having my husband home more and uh, just having that family time has been a major major blessing we've even got some jobs done on the house imagine that something we fail at miserably the rest of life so that's been a positive also all these new things that are coming out for people of all ages that are just free to get involved with they've been quite um, exciting as well for the children we found loads of things and then um, there's lots of quizzes going on and various other bits bringing people together which is very exciting okay I'm nearly at the end of the row Here we go. Now this first bit we're going to do slightly different to the rest of the repeat. So once you've got this first bit done then it's just copy and repeat. So when we get to the end of the row we're going to do as we have been doing um, all along and we are going to chain and turn. So we chain two, one, two, turn our work or turn first and chain it doesn't really matter, yarn over and insert into that first stitch to that first stitch being that one just there at the very beginning and this chain does not count as a stitch that's what is really important that does not count as a stitch from now on it will when we get to the end of this row so I'm just going to um, well I don't think I'll crochet all the way along because that'll be so boring for you um, but I will just demonstrate at the end so where we did our first stitch, it was the first chain that was our first stitch. So this stitch here might seem like the last stitch, but it's not. It's this top chain here. So when you come back along, you want to get all the way to this top chain here. I will show you that in the next video so that you don't have to watch me all the way along. <laughs> 